Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Bug Out with Brie. I'm Brie, Community Science Specialist from the Pacific Grove Museum of Natural History. This week we are going to move away from the class of arthropods and dive into the second largest class of animals, the mollusks, more specifically gastropods, which are the snails and slugs. There are over 60,000 species of snails and slugs, and they live from anywhere between land, freshwater, and ocean. Let's begin. Gastropod means stomach foot which is a good name for an animal that crawls belly down on a singular, muscular foot. Most gastropods have a single, usually spiraled, coiled shell, but the shell is lost or reduced in some groups, like the slug. They use their shell as protection from other creatures. If you're at the beach, you may see some of these shells wash up on shore, or you may even find a different species living in the tide pool area. A snail shell is present from early development and grows along with the snail. If the shell gets cracked, the snail's mantle, the tissue surrounding the organs, secretes the calcium and proteins needed to rebuild the shell. Think of it as your fingernails breaking down and your body is able to repair the nail. Gastropods feed on very small things. Their feeding habits are extremely varied. Some graze, browse, some feed on plankton, some are scavengers or detritivores, and some are active carnivores. They are important species because they eat fungi, rotting leaves, and even soil, which supplies the snail with calcium and other vital nutrients. Gastropods use a radula, a hard plate that has teeth for feeding. For example, a whelk, a predatory marine snail, feeds on other snails and barnacles by drilling holes with a radula into the shells of their prey. You may be wondering what the difference is between a snail and a slug. Well, most slugs evolved from snails, losing all or part of their shell over time. But they both glide on a muscular foot and have tentacles. The largest land mollusk in North America is the banana slug. You may have seen a banana slug while hiking through the Santa Cruz forest, which is also the mascot of UC Santa Cruz. This slug has a symbiotic relationship with the giant redwood tree, feeding on the seedlings of competing plants and sheltering in the redwood's moist environment. If you have ever touched a slug or a snail, you would have noticed it can retract its body and then it extends back out. This is driven by fluid pressure, like squeezing the end of a tube of toothpaste or blowing into a curly New Year's Eve horn. Snails and slugs can move this way because their bodies are boneless and filled with blood. Your blood gets pumped through pressurized arteries, but snails, they don't have many blood vessels. Their blood just soaks into spongy spaces in their tissues in other words, a snail is built like a spongy water balloon, and this serves as hydrostatic skeleton. Your own muscles work by tugging on your bones, but mollusks don't have bones. Instead, a gastropod's muscle coils around its blood-filled tissues. By squeezing these, it can twist, curl up, or extend its body. Gastropods crawl using a retrograde wave. The animal squeezes its muscles in a backward sequence, and this results in a forward movement. The first contraction causes the head to stretch forward. The second contraction squeezes more fluid forward, and so on. As the muscle contractions migrate backwards, the blood and body are pushed forward. The snail also makes a trail of slimy mucus to grease its way. Snails and slugs use their slime for everything from locomotion to nutrition. Slime can absorb up to 100 times its original weight in water. So it helps slugs and snails, which are mostly water, stay moist. It's also both a great lubricant and a sticky glue, so they can use it to glide over leaves and sticks or stick to a tree limb. Check out pgmuseum.org, the Museum to You page, for an at-home activity to better understand the bizarre way a gastropod moves using water balloons. See you next week!